if you, if you could choose one filmmaker whose whose work has inspired you or yeah left an a left an impact on you, then then who who would this filmmaker be? I'd say Tarantino. He kind of showed everyone it's okay to like think outside the box and to try different things and it and still make it commercially successful. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Den of Horror. You're about to watch another clip from an interview that I did with filmmaker Encia van Heerden. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Encia's work, do yourselves a favor and go and check out his two short films in the links below. OI and Hunter's Cabin are racking up millions of views on the internet. And when I say millions, I literally mean millions. OI has gone viral on YouTube and Hunter's Cabin is winning awards all over the world. Now, if you are not very familiar with short films like I am, then these two films are probably a very good place to start. They're not just good short films, they are good films. And I'm not just saying that because Encia is my guest. I'm saying it because I really sat down and found myself immersed in these two movies. So go and check them out and thank me later. In previous clips, we discussed the Blade remake. We also spoke about horror movies. Encia detailed a little bit of his experience working with filmmaker Neil Blomkamp. Encia worked on District 9, Chappie and Elysium. Now today, Encia speaks about two of his biggest influences, or at least influences when it comes to his work. The one is Quentin Tarantino, which might not come as a surprise, but the other is playwright Stephen Burkhoff. Now, if you don't know too much about Stephen Burkhoff, I'll give you a quick rundown. Stephen Burkhoff rose to prominence in England in the 1970s. His work, or at least the only way that I can describe his work, is something like William Shakespeare meets punk rock. It is volatile, it is violent, it is packed with imagery and imagination, foul language, beauty, the beast, and everything in between, and it has a real British cutting kind of humor. So I'm pretty sure that if you go and pick up one of these plays, you'll know exactly what I mean. So Stephen Burkhoff had a profound influence on the way that NCF and Hearden makes movies. This also led to a broader discussion, theater versus film, which is a lot more interesting than I initially would have thought, especially because of NCF's unique takes on all of these subjects. So I'm sure that there's gonna be something for all of us here to enjoy. And if you like this kind of content, whether it is the interviews all my horror movie reviews, bite me with a subscribe, but I'm not going to bore you anymore without any further ado. Enjoy the clip. <laughs> but um, I mean, just talking about uh, theater and film, going, in, going into that a bit and where you started out and everything. Well, firstly, I mean, uh, you're talking so much about film and you were talking a little bit about the influences and where, where your ideas for OI came from. If you, if you could choose one filmmaker who's, whose work has inspired you or yeah left an left an impact on you then then who who would this filmmaker be um i'd say tarantino um i think he's inspired uh, a whole bunch of like it's uh, definitely everyone from my generation mm. and um and and subsequent generations too uh and the reason for that is not necessarily style which is uh, phenomenal but it's more that he just it he kind of showed everyone it's okay to like think outside the box and to try different things and mm -hmm. it and still make it commercially successful because that's the thing if your movie doesn't make money then what are you, what are you doing you know uh, it needs to make money because that's mm -hmm. what the movie business is otherwise it's not a business and yeah. uh so you it needs to be good it needs to be entertaining and he showed me that you can make something completely insane and it still be good and it's still be entertaining and still make money. So Tarantino is a massive uh, influence, not not necessarily stylistically, although there's there's, there's, there's always some of his shots in the back of my mind where I'm mm. like, man, that's that's so cool. Mm. It's formulaic. His movies are still formulaic, and if you look at the script formula, mm. Mm. but it it just shows you where you can push that. Like it doesn't have to be in order it can you can do whatever you want i didn't actually realize that tarantino was a horror movie fan but apparently he's a massive horror movie fan and uh, so much so that he can't well, decide from Dawn, you know? yeah, well true okay yeah true and also <laughs> death proof death proof yeah, was, yeah. was was a good stab at the sort of slasher genre in, in a yeah. sense but um it is also really nice as i was reading through all of this stuff to see where he's um his influences came from hmm. you know like if you look at pulp fiction he he so much of what he did in pulp fiction was influenced by uh this old horror movie called black sabbath an mm. old italian horror movie which coincidentally is also the the inspiration behind the name of the ozzy osbourne band yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, um, sounds like a good movie. I need to go check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's an old <laughs> 1968 movie, I think, yeah. or something. But anyway, I mean, you're speaking a little bit about your your your, your film influences, Tarantino, which we're gonna we're gonna come speak about him and and your other influences too a bit later. But what about theater? I mean, I want to like I want to like. I want to just like, get into theater. Yeah, I want to just talk about Steven. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's Steven Burkhoff. I mean, I mean, you're talking about Tarantino being a, a revolutionary of filmmaking. I mean, I think anybody who knows anything about theater is going to talk about Steven Burkhoff because he kind of did the same thing for theater yeah. that Tarantino did for film. It, actually, I think now that I think about it, the parallels are quite uh, are, are and, stark, you know? That's a funny thing. I, I, I don't think that many people uh, know about him, and we just happened to to learn about him where, where we studied, which is weird. Like this weird little school in, in South Africa, yeah. like a Joburg. There, in a, you know, that little corner <laughs> stacked into the, like next to his old factory. That was, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know why we how we still alive because of that <laughs> thing next to it. But uh, yeah, Burkhoff was a massive influence and. And uh, well, I mean, this is this is really both of our story. This is not just me. Mm. I mean, I'll, I'll tell what I can remember, and then you can you can fill out the the rest of it. But I mean, we were terrible students for the first year <laughs> of our yeah. of our studies because because uh, uh, I think that's just how our minds work. We just need to figure stuff out, you know. Mm. We can't just we tried to jump into it, but there was always that whole thing of like. Oh, like you're doing all this theater stuff, but it's like none of it's exciting, you know, all of this boring kind of like, oh, do Shakespeare. And it's like, I don't understand half of what this guy is saying. Like, mm. what, what, what's he on about? You know, and especially like English is not my first language, you know. So, especially at that time, I was, it, I was terrible. I, like, I, I spoke Afrikaans for, up until that point, yeah. basically, for my whole life. Like, if you put all the English together, I spoke before that, maybe. Maybe you get like three days out of it, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so and then for me to then jump into Shakespeare, it's like, what the hell is going on here? You know? mm. So you did that. You did like um, all these Chekhov plays and that. And, and it's all like boring stuff that a 20, uh, 20 something year old mm. uh, me didn't mm. want to anything to do with. I was like, mm. what the hell is this? I, I don't mm. care about this guy and his feelings, you know? Like, just shoot something, <laughs> go something up. I mean, yeah, do something cool. And Stephen Burkhoff kind of did everything differently and changed that. He sort of added, like we were talking about Tarantino. Tarantino kind of added a, a certain sort of punk rock ethic to movies, and, mm. and that's what Stephen Burkhoff did for theater. That's he kind exactly, of made it. And, and the way, if you look at Stephen Burkhoff's uh, performances, he like dressed up in like leather jackets and stuff, so he mm. was completely punk rock. Mm. And then we took it and did our own thing with it. Um, which still to this day influences how I, I make movies um, and especially how I rehearse with actors. Massive amounts of dialogue, like heavy, heavy, heavy dialogue. And you kind of, you as an actor and a director, has to, you have to really work your way through that stuff. And, and the way we did it, we didn't have props. We didn't have set. We didn't have nothing. We had light and mm. sound and even though, even that we tried to keep to a minimum, mm. mainly because we were lazy. But mm. it was also the it's it's the the challenge of it. It's one of those things like you know, that engineering um, thing that they say like the best part is no part. So mm. the best lighting setup like if you can just have one, you can get away with one, just do one, you know, mm. or just do two. Like keep it simple until you really need to change it. All right. And if you need to change it all this time to make the thing more like your your play more um energetic or or for for to look cooler then maybe you need to rewrite your play <laughs> yeah sure like, sure like like just make make sure your 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 initial stuff is good i i now think about every single thing like because uh, for those of you who don't know Dan and i do a bunch of stuff together we're mm. doing a, a script of podcasts and we're writing movies together and we're doing all that kind of stuff together. And it's from, and I know it for a fact, it's from the Burkhoff stuff Definitely. where we started thinking about all the stuff. And then Tarantino came in around that time too, blew our minds on top of that. Mm. And now you've, you've got these two, like a vis very visual influence and a very 
like um uh the writing is kind of similar in very terms of dense, dense yeah yeah descriptive really descriptive writing so um yeah we 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 like somehow just got onto it and it it was everything that we wanted out of theater mm. um that, that we we wanted to do like real physical stuff real you know people fighting like mm. like that kind of stuff there's yeah. there's definitely a, a strong uh, sort of uh undercurrent of violence to, to mm. Stephen Burkhoff. Yeah. In fact, it's not even an undercurrent. It's, yeah, like yeah, right it's a very top current. <laughs> as far as an audience member, how, where does the power, because you come from both worlds, where does the power in both mediums lie for you? So the worst thing theater can do is try and be TV or, or movies because TV does it better. So whenever I see an ad for a theater show, it's got a bunch of sets that looks like a sitcom. Mm. I immediately turn off. I'm like, just make it a sitcom. Mm. Like, honestly, like, I don't want to watch any of this. Mm. So theater, where theater becomes powerful is if you take it away from that. Like, if you make it so there's no way that you can make this a TV show or a, a movie, that's where theater works best. And um, I feel that our minimalist approach to theater was was is the correct approach how mm. does how does that benefit the audience it's the same in movies really mm. uh, you you want to do the same thing in movies too where you don't want to show too much because people's imaginations will always be better than any visual effects that you can make by far by a long shot so if you can make it so that people imagine um things more which i tried in hunter's cabin for theater it has to be all imagination because you can do even less than you can in, in movies. Like you don't have a visual effects team. And even if you, if you uh, project something onto the back or something, it's done. You know, it's like, why, why would you want to do that? Like there's other things you can do. That's way more cool. Like I'd, I'd rather then at that point use um, shadows uh, to do stuff. And mm -hmm. cause I think that's going to be way cooler or yeah, there's a bunch of other things you can do. So in movies, you still want to engage people's imagination. So but that comes very much in the writing part of it. Mm. Like how much of it do you want to show and um, saying things in such a way that it uh, evokes an image in, in someone's mm. head. And if you can do that, then uh, well, off you go. You know, right. that's, that's Tarantino for, that's for Tarantino. Most, most of it is like the stories they tell each other. Like, hey, I went to... I went to Amsterdam and they, you know, they got the the mayonnaise on the on the chips there, and they mm. got, you know, like right. like that whole story, is like just two dudes in the car, mm. but you you with them there in Europe, you know, mm. and you can see how he kind of took advantage of the whole thing, and mm. um, you know, and then you know the whole bit uh, where where they at the door they're talking about. You know, while setting up another plot point for the movie uh, with uh, Masaga's his wife, you know, mm, mm. and like that whole conversation there about the guy that got thrown off the building, like that's all stuff in your imagination. You mm. don't see any of that, but you're so engaged because of how they, how the actors performed it and how it was written. And so much of that is what people take away from Tarantino's yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Hey everyone, that's about it for today. Thanks so much for listening. Don't miss the next part of this interview. Next time, Ensia is going to be discussing his super successful psychological horror film, O.I. He'll tell us a little bit about the unusual inspiration behind the film, as well as share with us his reaction to the film's success. He'll also tell us why it is so important for starting out filmmakers to get out there and make a short film. By the way, if you are fans of Quentin Tarantino, then check out my Quentin Tarantino's top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. And subscribe to this channel because I've also got Tim Burton's top 10 favorite horror movies of all time coming your way, as well as a heck of a lot more. So everyone, that's it. Thanks so much for all of your support. I really, really appreciate it. Stay tuned, stay safe, stay happy, and most of all, stay horror. Until next time.